I was pretty stoked about it. Um, I thought I get to hike around all summer and catch snakes. There's kind of nothing better than that. Snakes often get like the short end of the stick when it comes to conservation and actually protecting them. So I was really excited to have the opportunity to come out and protect some of the species that I love. My professor informed me that there was a solar panel job happening in Loveland and that I would be going over there and looking for snakes in the area. I've been doing that all my life, so I, I would choose to do that no matter what. The Foothills Solar Sub Project was basically born out of the 2013 flood. And because we're receiving federal funding in support of the project, we are required to comply with the National Environmental Policy Act, which basically requires that we have a certain level of public outreach to ensure that the public is comfortable with this particular project. The public outreach is what gave us the information concerning snakes. The site is basically in the middle of some existing neighborhoods, and there have been snake sightings before. And so the public got very concerned and approached the city in these public outreach meetings and said, what are you going to do? In response to that, and to also make sure that we maximize our reimbursement from FEMA, uh, we started this snake mitigation project. The city of Loveland got in contact with Dr. Stephen Mackesy with our snake lab at University of Northern Colorado to take a look to see what kind of impact building the solar panels was going to have on snake species in the area. What the crew has been doing is wandering the area in general, the actual site that is being leveled and where the solar panels are going to be installed, but then extending from there into the surrounding habitat and trying to move snakes that look like they would be at risk from the activity with the heavy equipment. We don't want anyone to get hurt out there from rattlesnakes. We also don't want the snakes to be killed from the construction equipment. The snakes we do find, we're moving them out of the way of the construction. We're moving them about a mile away from the site. I was actually part of the initial surveys way back in March. Initially, we were looking for den sites, but we were also looking for other animals that were in the area. Den sites are really important to snakes. They have homes just like you and I have homes. They just tend to leave them during the summer when it's nice and warm and there's an abundance of prey for them to find. And then when the temperature starts to cool down, they actually will go right back to that same den site. They go right back to their home um, pretty regularly every single year. So we found a total of 12 individuals that we've recognized from this den right here. And as you can see, it can frequently be really hard to actually find where the snakes are denning because this is just a tiny little inch across hole in the ground. They're in danger of getting disturbed by all of the movement, all of the equipment, possibly getting killed. We came in to mitigate that and relocate them, put them somewhere else. They're probably going to come back. Hopefully construction will be done. What you're seeing in here are bull snakes, so they're non-venomous. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put a pit tag in them, which will basically give them a unique code that we can scan. It's like a little microchip essentially. By pit tagging them, we'll be able to see that if we re-catch them over in that area, if they're just transversing over that half mile, or if they are actually staying in this area and making it their new home. So it's just kind of like getting a shot. They can be a little wiggly when they're this big. Just slide it directly in, inject it, and then we use some super glue to close up the wound. We can actually use a pit tag scanner, which will allow us to just scan it over the body and give us a unique code for the animal. These are the Western terrestrial garter snakes, uh, very common all throughout Colorado. And these are some of the individuals that we found up towards the den site that we were at earlier. All right. All right. One, two, three. All right. Goodbye, my snakes. Just kind of shows how amazing they are actually camouflaging. You're able to see them one second, and a second later, they're just hiding in the bush. We frequently find uh, toads just all about the work site. Here we are in late August. We've been out here for around three and a half months now. We've mainly found things to the west and to the north of where the crew has actually been working. If 
we found a lot of garter snakes, a lot of bull snakes, a lot of racers, a milk snake, which I've never seen one in Colorado before, which is, that's just really cool. The prairie rattlesnake is very common in some places out on the Eastern Plains, also in the foothills as we get into the rocky areas, but it doesn't seem to be overly abundant right on site. So this is the snake room at the UNC Animal Facility, and we have a specially constructed room uh, for these animals. Most of these are permanent residents that we have brought in from various parts of the world. By far and away, the most common and widespread rattlesnake in Colorado is the prairie rattlesnake. So this is a large male from the Loveland site, and the field crew found this about two and a half weeks ago. We kept the public safe during the construction of the project. We kept the public informed about what was going on. And also we complied with all of the regulations and that's because we are environmental stewards. It's not just about following the regulations, but it's the right thing to do.